<laughs> wow, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> to say yes and not let my awkward feeling <laughs> do anything crazy. Anyway, well, welcome everyone. It's time to begin. Uh, I've known Maureen Muldoon. It's um, 12, 13 years now. This is kind of crazy to me. And back when I first met her, she was leading the youth and family program at a spiritual center we went to. And the program that she was organizing for the kids was called Roots and Wings. That's our theme here uh, this month. And you know, it's all about rooting down into spiritual truth so that each individual child can spread their wings and soar in life. And so I just know that Maureen has done this herself. She has rooted down in spiritual truth in from many different traditions, synthesizing what really anchors her, her life, her children, she has stepped into spreading her wings as a mother with four children and a multitude of challenges that go along with having a bunch of kids and soared into tremendous creative power. One being um, uh, the creator of this community, of many of the programs here, of books, of other programs and voice back. So, uh, she knows all about spreading her wings and soaring and continues to do so. So I'm just so grateful to introduce Maureen Muldoon, the uh, spiritual director of this community and really someone who knows all about the limitless nature of God. So thanks, Maureen, for saying yes. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say today. <laughs> Thank you, Beth, uh, Bella. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. It's so good to be here. It's so good to see everyone here on this Sunday summer morning. And yeah, we're talking about roots and wings. And yeah, I did. I did create a program for the youth department at the Bodhi Spiritual Center called Roots and Wings. And um, and so getting to retread this idea is always fun. But this one is for the adults, it seems like, or the kids in all of us. So uh, some say that to have faith is to have wings, and that's a nice saying, but what are wings unless we actually attempt to fly? So you can have wings, but never take them out of the package. You know, they can sit safely and pristine on the back burner or the upper shelf with your china and your unmet dreams. That's what can happen with us with wings. It's not enough just to have wings, because why? Penguins have wings, ostriches have wings, and those two never leave the ground. <laughs> not, and so it's not just the wings that we want. We want the consciousness to test our wings. We want the consciousness to allow ourselves to fully feel uh, that source and that soaring ability when it comes to the limitless nature of God. We want to spread our arms. We want to take up space. We want to be able to lift ourselves and lift each other and allow God to lift us to these vantage points, these bolder possibilities so that we can experience this expansive nature of God and so that we can be helpful. Because being helpful regenerates in us an elixir that charges us in ways that nothing else can. And this is how we actually, as they say, earn our wings. However, trusting and testing our wings can sometimes feel uh, really scary. It can take sincere, like fierce faith. Just ask the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur uh, Wright. They were both born with no wings, and yet they flew. And then they enabled all of us and empowered all of us to fly. So when we think and speak of roots and wings, the roots are the known, what we anchor into, and the wings are the unknown. We have spent some time speaking about our roots, and I thought it would be a good idea to take just a moment and examine what our potential is when it comes to our wings. Where do we personally and communally want to branch out? And how do we allow ourselves to be lifted to the optimal idea of God? And how do we, as Marianne Williamson says, how do we make manifest the glory of God? Now, this line of questioning might 
make you want to rush to your vision board supplies and your journal and think, what am I, what am I up for? Where am I going? How am I growing? That's not actually what I'm asking. What I'm actually asking is how do we manifest the glory of God? And we do not want to assume that we can even begin to cobble together a vision close to the one that God has for us. So we need to be guidable, to be open, because what God would deliver to us and through us is so much better than what we could ever even begin to imagine. So making manifest the glory of God should make you want to scratch your head and sit up straighter a little bit. And you might even say, little old me, making manifest the glory of God? Like when did that become my responsibility? I got things to do and places to go. But all of my own planning will only take me to my littleness. And it will take me to the places where I know what I know. Within that little safety zone, is where most people stay and live and die in all that they think that they know. Now in A Course in Miracles it says to us, be not content with littleness. Be sure that you understand what littleness is and why you could never be content with it. Littleness is fear. Littleness is stingy, self-centered. Littleness is easily frustrated. Littleness is fixating on what's not there. Littleness is the dead zone of complaints and comparison and, and crucifixion. This is the kryptonite that takes us out of the ability to make manifest the majestic nature of God. And Hafez says, my dear, run from anything that might not strengthen your precious budding wings. My dear, run from anything that might not strengthen your precious budding wings. So again, take time to test out your wings, you know, because this will take us to the cusp of our comfort zone and it will invite us to step forward. And, and we do that all the time here. You know, we ask people, stand up, speak up, show up, share. And it can be like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready or willing or able. And so growing our wings is actually growing our wingspan, growing our consciousness. And so the question is, how do we make manifest the glory of God? How do we surrender into the greatness of our being? How do we, you know, fulfill that invitation of our limitless potential? Uh, so that's a question like and and I'm open to anybody who wants to guess on what that might look like So anybody have any guesses on how you might begin to make manifest the glory of God if you want to think about that a second I'll sing a little chant and all answers are welcome put it in the chat How do you make manifest the glory of God you get to engage in the conversation? How do you make manifest the glory of God? Here's a little clue I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. Okay, good, we got some answers. Amber Rose, focus on what is and enjoy it all. Oh, yes. A plus, Amber Rose. And then I think Sherry says, ask the Holy Spirit for direction. Amen. Amen again. Joni, gratitude. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Mari, gratitude for everything. Yes. Amber Rose and giving thanks for it all. Yes and yes and yes. Yes. Gratitude, man. So, Gratitude is the gateway to expansion. Gratitude is the gateway to everything. Everything, yes, everything. Gratitude is, is like faith on steroids. Faith says like, I hope this works out. I'm going to step forward in faith. I'm not really knowing where I'm going, but I'm willing to see something that I cannot see. And I'm willing to be able to see this something as good. That's faith. There's a little bit of fear in faith because it's like, oh, I'm going to have faith because I have to have faith because I actually have fear. So I'm going to try and have faith. Whereas gratitude comes in swinging. You know, gratitude says like, this is awesome. You know, do you see this? Do you smell this? Do you taste this? Do you get this? Do you know how blessed we are? You know, where faith gives a glimpse of our hopeful potential and helps us to step in, 
Gratitude springs in with swagger. Gratitude gets us to fly beyond our known potential. And we've been told a lot, like, go ahead and write those gratitude lists. Imagine the optimal idea and move into the feeling nature of that experience. Um, Meister Eckert has this quote that says, when the soul wants to experience something, she throws out an image in front of her and steps into it. You know, but it can't just be an image in your mind. It has to be something that's connected with your heart, something that you're willing to feel into. So gratitude and joyful expectancy help us to put that gas beneath the image. Gratitude has the capacity to increase really important neurochemicals like uh, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin that contribute to the feeling of closeness, of connection, of happiness. These experiences of closeness, connection, happiness, they are the springboard, this safety zone that allows us to uh, unfold and unfurl. Because if we don't, if we feel disconnected, if we feel unsafe, we're going to shrink instead of spring. And interestingly, I watched this happen for me yesterday. This man came to my house, which is not really common, as you would think, because I live on the edge of nowhere in the middle of, of no place. And, uh, you know, so it's kind of like odd to see somebody show up on my property. And it made me think about when I was writing this, that there used to be this, um, this, this phrase called, here be dragons. Here be dragons. And it's a term that they used when they were creating maps. And here be dragons would, would be something they would write on the edge of the map if this territory wasn't explored yet. It was a med medieval practice of putting illustrations of dragons or sea monsters or other mythical creatures on the uncharted areas of maps where potential danger might exist. So that's kind of where I live, <laughs> out in the uncharted territory where the buses don't run. And so to have a man walking on the property that I didn't know was a bit off-putting, and he was yelling out to me as he made his way closer, I need some help. I'm sorry to bother you, but I need some help. And he, what he wanted was he wanted to charge his boat battery. And he said that he had a, he had a kid and he had a wife. They were down by the water, which is you have to go down this steep stairs. And it was really, really hot that day. And they were stuck and they were stranded on these rocks outside my house. And here I was in this very rare and wonderful position of having this stranger knock on my door asking for help. Or was it a dragon? Who knows? You know, we all watch a lot of those TV shows that say, don't go in the basement. <laughs> this is not going to work out for you. So, and the truth is, he had all the markings of dragons. He had no shirt on. He was covered with tattoos, but man, they were bad tattoos. They were like they were like somebody had gotten drunk and just practiced on him. They were all over his body, and it looked like he had lent his body out to like kids that just like we let kids write on a wall. Like that's what some of them look like. And so I was a bit weary, but also in a bit of wonder. You know, what would God have me do here? And a thought came to me, a foreign thought, an odd thought that said, also, how do I get to be so lucky that he would stop by my house? Because this never really happened, you know? Nobody ever really knocks on your door anymore and asks for help. It used to be a more common thing where when I was a kid, we would go back and forth with our neighbors and ask for cups of sugar and butter and a jump for our car. And so since COVID, it kind of felt to me, or maybe even before COVID, that we have stopped sort of asking for help, or knowing how to give help or even accept help. And so... Uh, I said to this topless man on my property, sure, come on in and plug your boat charger up. And he said, thank you. And then he said, thank you, about 10 more times. And in his gratitude, my generosity grew. Because it was a hot day, and I thought, God, he must be really thirsty being stuck down on that rock with his wife and his kid. Maybe did like something to drink. And I said, is your kid thirsty? Is your kid allowed to have soda? I happen to have these little mini cherry Cokes that I thought were really cute so I bought them and he said yeah and so I gathered up a few drinks and I handed them over to this topless father with the bad tattoos and he said thank you a few more dozen times and then he took the drinks down to the boat while his battery was charging and the next thing I know he's back up on our property with his kid who's as cute as he could possibly be he has this blue-eyed little cherub staring up at me from my back porch and he's saying thank you to me 
and his earnestness and his gratitude made me feel like my wings were expanding and my love expanded and my generosity grew. And I asked this little kid, what's your name? And he said, Rainer. And I had never met anyone before with the name Rainer before. And I thought, that's so cool because every summer I read this book, Letters to a Young Poet by Renee R Marie Rilke. If you don't know if you've read this book, but it's a good one. And I said, your name is Rainer. And I said, that's one of the names of one of my favorite authors. And I thought to myself, what else could I give him? <laughs> that was a thought that went in my head. Like, do I have any toys around? Do I have any floaty devices that I can give this little, this little cherub? And, and, and it began to like work in my mind. I'm not kidding. My mind began to like look for ways that I could support this, these people. Not consciously, but I, I just noticed that it was happening, that this gratitude was coming back to me. And I looked at the father and I saw that he was, he was sweating and his face was sunburn on the top of his forehead. And I, I saw myself say, do you have sunscreen? And in that moment, I felt for him the way I would feel for my own son. And he rubbed his head and he said, no, am I getting burnt? And I said, you sure are. And he smiled in the way that somebody would smile who had forgotten to charge their boat battery. <laughs> And I watch myself go into the house and grab our bottle of sunscreen. And then I watch myself go to our hat rack. You know, you always have too many dumb hats that you have around. And I grabbed him a hat and I handed it back to him. And I said to his son, we got to get your dad some shade. And the father smiled and he said, thank you. And again, he took the hat and he put it on his head and he took the sunscreen and he put it in his back pocket of his jeans. And here's the important lesson. He never said no. He never said, oh, this is too much. I can't take this. I don't need this. I'm fine. He never said that. The only thing he ever said was thank you. And he said thank you a lot. And he said it without shame. And he said it without fear. And here's even the kicker. And I know the Holy Spirit was giving me this lesson of having this uninvited visitor to my house to teach me something. Because what he did next was he asked for more. <laughs> yeah, he asked for more because the charger that he was charging wasn't working. And he said, we just bought this $200 charger, but we didn't know it wasn't charged from when we got it at the store. And it's taking so long to charge, we'll never get out of here. And he asked if he could take his battery out of his boat and put it in my husband's car and take my husband's battery out of his car and charge the battery of his boat on our car. And there was a moment that I watched myself question this request because thoughts were fleeting through my brain and they were saying like, wait, you want to do what? I mean, what if this guy messes up my husband's car? What if he puts the drain battery in my husband's car and takes the good one? You know, these were thoughts that went in my mind. But it was a hot day and he had a kid in a boat and I could have said, no, I'm not comfortable with that. I didn't, I could have said, I don't even understand the request. I, I don't know how to fulfill that request. I don't have jumper cables and maybe you need to go someplace else. And so I decided to just let the Holy Spirit speak. And what I ended up saying was, I have no idea what you're asking me to do, so let's do it. <laughs> and that's what the Holy Spirit asks us in the Course in Miracles. It says, when your brother asks you to go an extra mile, just go because it doesn't matter. It's really interesting to think about that concept. And so again, he said to me, thank you, like another 10 times. And he smiled and I said, I hope you're a mechanic. And he said, actually, I am. And so I grabbed my husband's toolbox and I helped this sunburned, badly tattooed, topless man remove the battery from my husband's car and replaced it with his boat battery. And together we charged the battery and then we replaced it and we put Will's battery back in his car. And while the battery was charging, he told me that when his son got the soda, I just think this is so sweet. His son was a little quirky. And he told me that his son always takes with him, like he was this little 10 year old. He was like this short and he takes with him a dress suit and a bow tie and dress shoes. And he said he needs to take them with him wherever he goes and he's swimming in them right now. <laughs> and I said, really? He said, yeah, it's kind of weird. And I said, I think that's wonderful. Kids who have weird things like that, they end up being magnificent. And so he said, yeah, well, when I gave him the soda, he said to me, dad, I need to go up those steep stairs. I need to tell that woman. I need to tell the lady who gave me the soda. Thank you. And I said, really? Like he needed to do that? 
and this information made me go into the kitchen and grab a bag of sweet grapes from the freezer that, and I handed them over to the man and I said give these to your son and I know he's gonna love them because all my kids love them and and when he does when he gets them tell him he doesn't have to come up the stairs to say thank you tell him to just you know pay it forward before he left I asked him a few things about his tattoos because we had some time there and over his chest was this one that was for his friend who died. And on his knuckles were uh, spelled out the name of the mechanic shop that he worked at. And on his side, the weird lady, um, it was for the vintage cars that he had renovated. And when he left, I went to the edge of my property so I could see his boat as it began to sputter away. And as he did, his wife stood up in their boat and she turned to the island and she yelled at the island or to no one in particular because she couldn't see me from where I was. She just stood up and yelled out to everyone, thank you. <laughs> and as I walked through the forest, I couldn't help but think like I was the one who had been gifted. How is that possible that I could feel so magnificent and in such magnitude? How is it possible that this family was my teacher? They asked for what they needed. They gave thanks for it. They received it without shame, without guilt, without barter. They just received it. And that was such a gift for me because sometimes I have so many conditions on what I'm willing to give and receive and to who and to when and to where. But the Course tells us that love is the way that we walk in gratitude. And that gratitude is how we actually bring heaven to earth. And gratitude is this life-giving, this water, this light, this wind beneath our wings. And it's the last thing that ego wants us to reach for is gratitude. Because ego thrives in the dead zone, in the critical zone, in the comparison zone, in the crucifixion. It has us circling the drain as opposed to the gratitude zone, which is where there's fields of of infinite potential where troubles melt like lemon drops where insight inspiration flows like undammed waters where there's every meat is absolutely met and your brother's win is your win and we join with each other out of a mutual awareness of abundance not your abundance not my abundance but simply of abundance there's more where that came from and it increases as I extend it and receive it where there's nothing your holiness cannot do. So the awareness of this is how we grow and test our wings. And the man will come and he will knock on your door. And it will symbolize either an actual man knocking at your door or all of the ways that life says, like, can I come in? Like, can I extend your, your, your branches for you? Can I help you increase your wingspan? And at first you might think, no, I know I don't recognize this. And the world will ask you for something, you know, a charge or a drink or some time or the benefit of a doubt. And you'll think, I have no energy for this. I have no time. I don't trust him. I don't know him. I, and I don't want this. And, and what I'm going to say to you is don't believe what you think. Just don't believe your thoughts. These limitless beliefs are based on scarcity. We measure out our love and our willingness in thimbles, always checking that we get ours first and then if there's something left over, then we give. But here's where we can truly test our wings. You take care of your brother as God takes care of you. It's reciprocal. And when it's your time to give, throw open your cupboards and give in gratitude. And when it's your time to receive, throw open your, your cupboards and receive in gratitude. And don't harm yourself in the process. So after the topless man and the blue-eyed boy and the grateful mom left only ripples in the water, I grabbed this book, Renee um, Marie Rilke, and I read a quote of it that I had underlined that I just loved and it fit in so perfect with this talk so I wanted to close and share it with you and the quote is perhaps all the dragons in our lives are princesses who are only waiting to see us act just once with beauty and courage perhaps everything that frightens us is in its deepest essence something helpless that wants our love so run my dear from anything that may not strengthen your precious budding wings and that's the word wow i have like tears for me thank you that was magnificent i cannot wait to get to the conversation 
you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I uh, I could just close my eyes and listen to you all day. Your voice is so soothing. Um, and I love how your song kind of touched on this topic of littleness and moving into something more expansive. Uh, and um, I feel like that helped inspire more for our conversation. Um, and our conversation is going to come up in just a minute, but now we're going to hear from Kate Miller, who's going to tell us about the exciting things happening at Speakeasy. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Miller, and I'm a grateful member of Speakeasy. Speakeasy is a virtual community with a full calendar of events available to support your spiritual journey throughout the week. Some of this week's events are Mary Magdalene Meditation and Blessing, which is this Monday at 7 p.m. Central Time. The meditations are activated and imbued with sacred energies of Mary Magdalene, and they're designed to clear, transmute, and uplift while bringing the masculine and feminine energies into a more balanced harmony. And on Tuesday evening, I invite you to join me for Death Cafe, and Death Cafe is a once a month um, gathering where it's an opportunity for us to meet in a confidential and safe and caring environment to discuss death and dying. All thoughts, feelings, and experiences are relevant. It's not a grief support group, but definitely grief does show up. So please um, join us for the conversation. Also this week, we have tech and parenting salons. Um, see the meeting calendar for details. If you're a computer, if you've got computer tech questions or parenting issues, please consider joining these groups. You can also find the link to our calendar of, of events um, in the chat and at speakeasyspiritualcommunity.com. Speakeasy there you'll find Zoom details, times, and registration for each of the events and many more. Please take a close look at the website and see where you can get involved in our community and what it has to offer. And um, in the summer, as with most spiritual communities, things take a dip. And if you've been recharged by today's um, service, by the talk, by the music, please consider um, keeping Speakeasy's battery charged up. So Speakeasy is a non-for-profit community and we exist on the generosity of our community members. We thank you for playing your part in taking the opportunity to make a donation for today's daily bread. Your generous donations help us bring spiritual leaders, artists, and speakers to Sunday service and to keep important conversations going. And so today I invite you to go within and see what's yours to share. The donation link is in the chat as well as on our website speakeasyspiritualcommunity.com. Thank you for your generous support. Thank you, Kate. And if any of you haven't been to Death Cafe, Kate holds an amazing space for that conversation. So, um, and it's, you know, anything that you're letting go of in your life. So um, please come, it's really rich. Uh, so here we are, this is, um, time for the truly unique experience of Speakeasy Sunday service, our community conversation. So this is where we invite you to speak easily, find your voice and your truth and share your thoughts, inspirations, awareness, and your questions. Uh, and when you feel called to share a question or a comment, please raise your virtual hand. Okay, and that's located in the reactions tab at the bottom of your screen. And please also note to leave your video on when doing so, uh, so that we can find you and we want to know and see you. And I'll get the conversation started. Um, you know, I loved how you said gratitude comes in swinging, you know, uh, and, you know, faith is one thing, but gratitude takes it to another whole level. And the other thing was dragons really being princesses <laughs> <laughs> you know um i just 
thought I'd ask, like, what more do you have to say about gratitude coming and swinging? Like, if you have faith, but like, just really ramping up the energy around it. Yeah, you know, gratitude, and you know, I just I was thinking about this this past week was like, you know, faith, faith is is faith is is great. But like, but when we exercise gratitude and as we continue to exercise gratitude we retrain our minds there are a lot of times when we get into this um kind of low level thinking um that can cause us to project that on everything that we see that there's not enough or it could be better if only or if only or if only and it's like to begin to like really practice radical gratitude actually shifts our mind and then shifts our experience and it lifts us you know, it lifts us to the same exact experiences happening in the world. Like I think about my dad. Gratitude doesn't mean you're going to have a better life. It just means you're going to be happier in the life that you have. Yeah. And th this is like, this is like priceless elixir. So that's what I say about that. <laughs> mm. So, you know, I could totally see how in the experience that you shared with the man and the son and the boat battery, how you could have turned that into a dragon, mm. but it turned into a princess. Yes. And, and a prince and a, a, just such a rich experience. I could see how it touched you. I just wondered if you'd share a little more about that and then we'll go on to Joni. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because even in writing this, there's a part of me like in the story of it, I look like the good guy. Like I'm the guy who has so much and I'm being so giving and so giving. But really, I really, really got like what I loved about this man is that he never made an excuse. He never was like, oh no. He was always like, he just was this really open person who was like ready to receive. And I was, and I wasn't put off by it at all. I was like, I liked it because when you give to somebody who's ready to receive, it feels nice. As opposed to when you give somebody a compliment, they're like, no, 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 not me. You almost feel like you've offended them. Yeah. And it, it's almost painful to give something that is not received. Right. And so like, I, the more he gave me gratitude, the more I was like, oh, I got more. <laughs> I'm going to go get you some grapes. I'm going to go, I'm going to go sew your kid a new jacket. I'm going to go get some bow ties. I mean, I was like weird, but like his gratitude made me want to give him more. And I think this week it would be really fun for us to play around with like how we can experience that for each other, how we can practice that for each other. Well, I think you're also speaking to the ability to spread your wings mm -hmm. is sort of in some ways easier to do in this receptive space. Mm. You know, when, when there's receptivity to what you're sharing, you can spread your wings further and further and further. Yeah. Yeah. And you think like you, we've all had the opportunity to extend some good. And instead we measured things in thimbles and like we went back after that and we're like, why the fuck didn't I give him the soda? You know what I mean? Like I could have just given him a glass of water in my stingy way. Like, but like you give him the soda, you give him the high, le you give him the, give him the best because, because you're going to regret not doing that. Even Schindler's list, when you see him at the end and he saved all of those people and he had a ring on his hand, he's like, I could have done more. We don't yeah. want to relive. We don't want to live in the regret of not being not being open to that flow of gratitude and generosity because it makes us, it doesn't feel good in our bones yeah. as opposed to that's like being a penguin. We're just waddling around. I mean, not to knock penguins again, but like you have wings, you have wings for the sole purpose of soaring into a greater consciousness. That's how you do it. Anyhow. Uh, I love that. I love that. Joni, I see you have your hands up. Uh, I think you need to highlight yourself. There you go, Joni. I got you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say I had an opportunity through something similar with my little car's battery. Um, there's such a habit of resistance of no, 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 um, because that fuels my um, judgments. So I noticed yesterday when I had an opportunity to uh, finish up so my little car could get back on the road, I ran into 
uh, the battery, a battery that should have been working. I bought it new last year and boy, did my ungratefulness pour out. I was in littleness and not thankful at all that there was so much good about what has happened in the last year that the, the car was working fine other than that. And um, my ego blocked all of that. And I got scared. I got fearful, frustrated, lack, all the way blame 10 years ago to my ex who probably was causing it. Who knows? <laughs> but my wings, um, I felt to take the time at least to take a breath. I took a breath. And I'm guessing that my wings started to say, you can go out of your com comfort zone and stop this by breathing, by getting still. And what popped into my head a little while later was, oh, the people, okay, just buy a new one, call up the place and, you know, just trust that it'll be okay. When I called that place, the first thing they said, I said, you know, can can you help me put the battery in? Can I, I got to come in and buy another one that's dead. And he asked my name and phone number. And he said, well, you bought a new battery last year. That battery is under a two-year warranty. <laughs> yes, come on in and I'll replace it. When I, when I thought about this, then that was fun and we had a good time. I, I, I really was able to watch in real time those thoughts where I was in fear, where I was in, in gratitude. And my mind, um, in my mind's eye, I saw that it was the lack of gratitude that prevented me from even, you know, it, the stickiness, hanging onto the stickiness of my, my <laughs> ego. So when I'm thinking of this, because this, we talked about this on earlier call, and I'm hearing your story. You're so amazing. Yeah, I talked to Joni about this story because she had told me this story that it's her battery died yesterday too. I'm like, what are the chances that we have all these battery stories? <laughs> so, so as, I, as I prayed on it, it's I'm charging. I get a chance to charge my gratefulness battery. Mm. If if I could have started that because also my neighbor came over for the whole day trying to charge it i wasn't in gratitude if i would just charge my gratitude battery love and appreciate what is right in front of me the relief yeah. will be peace mm. i would even say gratitude charges your battery mm. yeah. you know and yeah. Oops, you know, sorry. i i feel like it's not a coincidence like this whole idea of like what charges our battery like what like allows us to keep going yeah. with lots of energy it's gratitude yeah yeah deb hey good morning oh gosh i love this i love this uh sermon today maureen and when you said that it could be a princess or a dragon i love that you wanted to play no matter what the outcome was going to be that I'll play with the dragon. I'll play, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> like, I just want to play. So this is what, this is what purpose looks like to me. And um, thank you for being this lighthouse for us all, you know, that we're here to play, you know, here to play our role. So how, how do you stay detached from outcomes and just be who you are, who you're meant to be. Like, this is what I'm hearing here today. Yeah. And I love it. So thank you. Yeah, it's a great question, Deb. And um, if you mute yourself, I'll answer because I seem to be echoing off your... Um, so, um, yeah, it's a great question because I continue to learn this answer. And the, the, the question is, the question is, the woman comes home to her house and there's a strange man in her yard and he wants her to do all these things and she has to write a sermon. Don't you know? So go away so I can write my sermon about spiritual practices and how to apply them. <laughs> that's the that's the ego. And the Holy and the Holy Spirit has taught me time and time and time and time and time again stop what you're doing be present with what is you're not teaching anybody anything i'm going to teach you something that you might if you don't get yourself in the way be able to share that and so it it, it, it it's a practice of um 
you know, that thing that I said, like, if your brother asks you to go someplace, go, because it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter in the realm of my little thinking. And the section that I read from A Course in Miracles, it says, like, you are not made for littleness. You're made for magnitude, but you don't know how to get to your own magnitude. You don't know that. You will try and figure that out through vision boards and through journaling and through pulling cards and through. But really what it, it, what it is is to empty yourself. Empty all of your plans, empty all of your preferences, see how empty you can get, which listen for me, that's like big work because I was so full of myself and still am a lot of the time. Like you go away. I got to do me. I'm not you. You, you, you got your problem. Your problem has nothing to do with me. <laughs> so, so that's what it is. It's emptying yourself. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Um, it's beautiful. I love that. I love Absolutely how beautiful. it keeps distracting you from your plan to write your sermon. Yeah. You know, when you can actually practice what your sermon is right now. Yes. And, and not only that, but you're not going to write your sermon. You're going to write my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so much better to say God's sermon than Maureen's sermon. I trust me on this one. <laughs> and God sent you a wingman, sent you Joni's story to Ma like wake you up. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, I love that. Liliana. Hello. I hope my I hope my internet doesn't kick out on me. But uh I love that story, Maureen, so much. And I love the way you tell a story. So and I've been the one in the boat saying, thank you. <laughs> you know, so Oh, it was great. But anyway, I wanted to read that passage of uh, what I what I read to uh, the other day. And yes, it's just, it's definitely. Liliana, Liliana was in the morning group and she read this and I was like, that's exactly it. And um, I, I pulled a little bit from this section of the book. And Liliana also reminded me of the time when I was just speaking about getting out of your way. Like you told us recently, you were at this pottery class and you were there to learn, but somebody needed help and you ended up teaching her the whole class. And that's what it looks like sometimes. Yeah. But the, being a good you know, helper allows us to receive help in a more abundant way. It just does. Yeah. And, and, and then the, and then the day before yesterday, I had another opportunity to help this woman. Like I asked her, I said, do you want, I said, because I could see she was really having some problems, but anyway, it just was, um, it was, it was just this beautiful exchange. But yes, yes, yes. And then she said, you know, my goal here today was to come in and learn to center and throw a few cups. And, and she goes, and I never would have been able to do that if you hadn't asked if I needed help. And she said, so my goal got completed because you asked. And it was just, just it's like, and then I also learned something from it in teaching her uh, another aspect that I've been working on. So it was just a, just a beautiful exchange. Um, so, yeah. And yeah. And it's way more than the pot, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the interaction and the exchange between a sister and, uh, and brothers. So anyway, this is the um, this is the passage. It's in the same chapter that Maureen read about, um, which is the um, chapter fifteen, and it's littleness versus magnitude. And so um, you can close your eyes if you want and just take in the words because they're so beautiful. It says, "Holy child of God, when will you learn that only holiness can content, can content you and give you peace? Remember." that you learn not for yourself alone, no more than I did. And this is Jesus talking, no more than I did. It is because I learned for, for yourself, wait a minute, it is, it is because I learned for you that you can learn of me, but I would not teach you what is yours so that together we can replace the shabby littleness that binds the host of God to guilt and weakness with the glad awareness of the glory that is in him. My birth is in you. My birth in you is your awakening to grandeur. My birth in you is your awakening to grandeur. Welcome me not into a manger, but into the altar to holiness, where holiness abides in perfect peace. My kingdom is not of this world because it is in you. My kingdom is not of this world because it is in you. And you are 
of your father. Let us join in honoring you who must remain forever beyond littleness. That was a little choppy, but it was paragraph nine. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. Thank you, Rosiana. I heard footsteps coming and it's my son and I said, don't start. <laughs> <laughs> but that's exactly it, Liliana. Like, like love in the midst of life is really beautiful. Like you got this woman who's reading this paragraph, the son's footsteps in the background, the guy's coming to ask to be charged. All of it's happening all at the same time. And because we allow it to just be and go with the flow, like then your giggle sprinkles through the whole thing. It's like, man, we just don't even know how good we got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you for thank sharing. You. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you so much for that, Liliana. You know, it's such a good reminder. And, you know, whether it's dragons or princesses or um, uh, littleness, we're stepping into our magnitude. You know, you really stepped into your magnitude in that moment. And that's spreading our wings, you know? Um, you disappeared there. Are you coming back on here, Maureen? Sure. Conversation. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I just feel like we can all do that. I had a, I had an experience this week. Um, I went to a mastermind retreat. It was at a hotel and I had a roommate who was coming in from New York who I, I had never met her, but, um, you know, I took a moment before the week started. I was like, okay what would you have me do? And uh, the guidance was like, just ask her if she needs anything for the room. She's flying in. Like, you're right here. You can, you can easily bring stuff. So, you know, she was like, oh, just some, like some bubbly water would be great. Okay. So I bought a bunch of stuff and I got, I packed a little, um, uh, little cooler full of snacks and things. And, um, the week was just, we, we, it was, we were such good roommates. It just, we just, you know, had so much fun together. And what's interesting is somebody else had asked me to be a roommate. Um, no, somebody else had asked me if they could come stay at my house uh, for this experience. And I said, okay, but I'm actually going to go stay at the hotel. So I won't be here, but if that's what you want to do. And she ended up just finding somebody else to be a roommate with instead and staying at the hotel. And at first I was like, wait, what? You're, you're rooming with someone else after you asked to like, don't you, I thought you would want to be my roommate. So after we moved past that, you know, I ended up rooming with somebody else and it was perfect. And the person that she roomed with ended up just like triggering her all week. And I was like, Hmm, I sort of felt the divine orchestration of all of this. And then on the last day, my roommate uh, didn't have a flight out till that night. And she was planning on spending the day at the pool and it rained all day. Um, and I said, hey, it's gonna be raining all day. Why don't you just come hang out at my house? And, you know, it turned into such a beautiful experience and such a deepening of friendship and None of that was planned, none mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I share that because in everything, mm -hmm. we have that opportunity to yeah. expand and spread our wings. And um, yeah. yeah, that's but so great because you could have, you, um, along the way, we could make, we could make a thousand dragons. You know what I mean? We'd be like, oh, this person, this is not, this is not, and this is not. And it's like, what we don't know is that our God is so good and weaving a tapestry of like the, the optimal outcome as we let go. And number one, number two, if you ever have the opportunity to room with Beth Gordon, make sure you take a big yes on that because she will stock the room with more treats than a Girl Scout troop. We'll have a dance party too. <laughs> yes. Yes. It will be pure fun. So do not miss that opportunity. All right. Well, well, does anybody else have anything they want to say here? Because uh, if not, we're going to close it out with another amazing song from Dear Dog Feather. Yay. Yay. Thank you.
play again. Um, I'm going to go off script again and play another original, um, again because of the, the theme. Um, this is a really kind of silly song um, that I wrote about a rooster that I had, um, but uh, it was kind of his, his process of um, trying to quite literally find his wings, so um, that's why I said I'd play it. Um, it's called sure. The Loneliest Rooster. <laughs> Anybody want to be my friend? I don't like to fight, I'm much too small. I don't stay out at night, I don't grow at all. And when the sun is low, I leave you safely to the shed. I'm supposed to be and so <laughs> are each and every one of us I love that you can get more uh of dear dog feathers music by checking the the links in the chat there's a YouTube channel and a Facebook page links here so thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us today your music is just spectacular thanks very and much for having me yeah, maybe some of us want to consider flying over, finding our wings and flying over to Ireland and get to meet Dear Dogfeather in person for our Irish retreat. If you want more questions or if you have questions about that, uh, check out the website. <laughs> yeah, that's coming up in September. So mm -hmm. if you, you've never, I've never been to Ireland, so I'm so excited to go. Mm -hmm. Talk about flying. Talk about spreading our wings. <laughs> <laughs> 
September is a lovely yes. time to come as well. Weather would be nice. Hopefully. Awesome. We'll probably just drink tea. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys. Have a beautiful day, week, life. All right. Thank Bye. you. Have the best day ever. Bye. <laughs>